Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, The Secrets of Dumbledore. I mean, I like Jude Law. He's great. I've liked him since Gattaca. I liked him since Midnight in the Garden of Good and e Evil. You know what I mean? Like, I've liked that fool since I saw him. And then Cold Mountain, though. Cold Mountain, I was like, what? Like, he can't pull off an American accent. And Cold Mountain couldn't pull off this... The southern accent, they just had him shut up. Like, he didn't say shit in that movie. So, he's fine. You know, he's a good actor. He's a very good actor. He's great. Um, I I per personally, I like Johnny Depp. Um, I've never met him. Sure, he's a nice guy um, when he's not drunk. <laughs> sure, he's a fun guy when he is drunk. I personally like Mads Mikkelsen as the bad guy. He's a really great bad guy. I've loved him as the bad guy since Casino Royale, the first time I remember ever seeing him. So for me, it's better because when they showed uh, Johnny Depp in that first movie, you know, I was like, oh, he looks dumb as fuck. Like the haircut just, oh, I just did it that day and it was by somebody at Fantastic Sam's or some shit. You know, they're not trying to hide the little facelift L's in the back of his head at all. And it's just like the, you know, diops or whatever. Like it just, I just... Mm. A blonde werewolf Chan Tatum. It was just wrong. I didn't like it. Edward Scissorhands. Um, he's great in Benny and June. Didn't say anything in either. Um, he's great in Pirates of the Caribbean. I can't imagine anybody else as good. I mean, he makes those movies what they are. And for the most part, they're kind of good. It's debatable, you know, if they're movies as far as like cinema goes, but... You know, they're really fun adventure films. And he does a great drunk pirate. I think he got too method with that. You know, I didn't really pay attention to the trial or whatever. But, you know, because it's just boring. You know, <laughs> my friend watched the whole thing. He was like, yo, that girl is crazy. I'm like, you know, it's not uncommon for really good looking girls to be a little... You know, for whatever reason, you know, it's not uncommon. Sometimes it's just because they've been, like, traumatized from being good looking. Like, they've been, like, abused their whole life. So, they got, like, trauma. You know, maybe they got PTSD and shit from being diddles and, you know, whatever. I'm not hating on, you know, hot girls. But I'm just saying, you know, a crazy hot girl wouldn't be, like, a unicorn or something, you know. So, I prefer Matt Mickelson. I love... Uh, Eddie Redmayne in this. I think he does the best part I've ever seen him do. He's great as this Newt Scamander. You know, he's kind of like a little, you know, he throws a little bit of that, like just getting a little, you know, disabled Stephen Hawking in there when his girlfriend shows up and he's like, for the most part, he's, it's subtle. I think he plays the role good. I buy him as the author of books about magical creatures. I buy it. The casting is good. The story is whatever, kind of, you know, it's kind of dependent on this magical creature that the bad guy kills and then brings back to life to like do his bidding. But there was a twin. I felt like they just killed off Ezra Miller because it's getting crazy. Personal life was just getting out of control and they were just like, yeah, let's just kill this character because if we're going to do another one, we're not going to want to you know, deal with whatever baggage is coming along with this kid. It seemed like, because otherwise, why are they just killing him off like that? But it was fine. You know, I liked the casting for his brother. Thought he did a good job. Totally by him. Looks like a better looking Eddie Redmayne. I didn't like the whole crab scene, the crab walk scene. That was like, what? Was that made for toddlers? Did you just throw that in there specifically for toddlers? What was that? I mean, maybe it would have been fine if it was shorter, but it just seemed like they were trying to sell a level on a video game. Some video game they're gonna make and they're gonna have a level where you have to dance your way out of danger. That was kind of dumb. Overall, I'd like it. Um, it's pretty good. I'd say the first one was better. Had a better story, better creatures, all that. So Jude Law as a young Dumbledore is cool. Mads Mikkelsen as the bad guy. Love him as the bad guy. Always love him as the bad guy. He makes a perfect bad guy. He's just got a bad guy face. He's got a bad guy face. I love it. 
He looks fucking awesome. I like that they pretty much did what Dumbledore does. Like, they didn't do it as much as they did in the Harry Potter movies. Because in the Harry Potter movies, it's like, well, she has the time turner because she's going to need it. And then he's got the thing because he's going to need it. And then, so it's kind of like that, but not as Chekhov's gun. You know what I mean? It's more kind of ancillary, you know, like kind of just like, eh, you know. Oh, yeah, that's there. I like the Lestrange's brother. I think he's great. Pretty much everybody is great. I don't have any issues with casting at all. I like the enchantment on the bags. When they open the bags, like they're enchanted and then like some crazy shit happens. Overall, Harry Potter is great. As far as J.K. Rowling and being a trans exclusionary radical feminist, right? Turf. I don't know if she's like that at all. Like, it seemed like from what I read, they were coming at her, right? Man, it would be so much easier to have like a, a smart person write this shit. Oh yeah, I was talking about her being uh, a trans exclusionary radical feminist. And from my, from what I saw, it seemed like she was just saying people who menstruate article talking about specifically women who are of childbearing capacity and slash years and they took it too fucking personally and they came at her so she was like what bitch i said it what like, i don't know i don't know her personally it seemed like she was like down for the cause you know what i mean as much as some like person in england can be brainwashed motherfuckers you know and i say that because i've never been to england i don't know they just have a queen that they pay to not lead them to have a parliament and it's just like what okay well okay uh you have a german <laughs> you have an inbred german as your what isn't she german isn't your queen german wasn't she born in germany doesn't that make her german so the queen of england is german i mean one of them is like paying to date rape children you know all kinds of issues with that she i don't know it seemed like she was down with trying to help gay people and then motherfuckers were coming at her for like just trying to be specific about people like her is it transphobic to be like well you know you have also had the experience of being a white man look at caitlin jenner like that motherfucker won mad gold medals and then turns around and is like oh no wait i've just been lying about who i was for the last 60 years <laughs> i mean how does chris feel about you know what i mean like how fucking unfair to her right like why didn't you let her be with somebody she was into? You know, it's just, I don't know. I just don't feel like that is brave. <laughs> you know, lying about who you are for 60 years and then for the whole 60 years voting against who you say you are. Coming out and being like, yeah, I'm different. And then continuing to vote against the interests of people who are like you from the get-go. So I don't see how that's brave, dude. Is that, is that transphobic? The reason Dave Chappelle is so mad at gay people is because the, you know, as far as like a timeline goes, gay rights have moved faster than rights for black people specifically in his case. And I say that's because they had white men on the job. If you want your case to move through the court faster, get more M&Ms on your side. Like accept more white males as black and then that shit will be done tomorrow. So I feel like they were just like coming at her like hard and she was like, yo, all right, first of all, didn't say it like that. And second of all, now that I, you fucking make me think about it, yeah, what they said was actually correct. I, you know, I've been hanging out with these guys for a second, been listening to what they were saying was I was on the fence and you guys just pushed me over the fucking fence. It's like some of those Trump kids, like seriously, I fucking promise you, I got kicked off of Twitter for literally saying the same thing Trump did. So Trump would say something like, Rosie O'Donnell's a fucking ugly bitch or some shit. And I would say the same thing he did, except for I would change the subject to him. So he would say, Rosie O'Donnell's an ugly bitch. I would say, Donald Trump is an ugly bitch. Literally, that's all I did. And they were like, oh, well, you're targeting. And I'm like, yeah, well, yo, I'm not the fucking president, am I? I got like 20 followers. The only people that can hear me are 20 motherfuckers. What are you talking about, bitch? So they can suck a dick. Before that happened, I had started a 
like an alternate Twitter page because I wanted to see what was up with all these alt-right people, right? So I wanted to like kind of like go incognito and see what the fuck. And I literally opened a thing, you know, like an account that said, Bitch McConnell, what alt-right alt-night. I said whatever shit about Mitch McConnell being a dumb fuck or like some kind of mega aligned shit. I don't even remember what the fuck I wrote. All of a sudden, like I had like 125 people, you know what I'm saying? Whereas the account that I've had for, you know, I had since Twitter started 30 people, but like not a lot, <laughs> Fucking not a lot. I had way more friends on MySpace. Hell, I had more friends on Friendster probably. You got to give it to her. She got a whole generation of kids to read. She did. There wasn't shit to read. She came out with these books. All of a sudden, every little kid is reading. I don't see kids reading. I mean, last time I saw kids reading, it was like the Hunger Games, you know, and that was a while ago. So get on it, authors. Get on your shit. Get these kids off their, you know, balls deep in cell phones. You know, they shouldn't even have cell phones. If you don't have a job, you shouldn't have a cell phone. Hell, I don't even want a cell phone. Hell, I miss the good old days when you would like call somebody's house and be like, yo, what are you doing? All right, cool. What are you going to do today? All right, cool. I'll see you there. Bye. And then your day would unfold. Now people are like, they got tracking apps. They could follow their friends around and be like, oh, I see you're at the blah, blah, blah. What? And then they're standing around in circles, talking to each other while they're standing next to each other, but they're texting. I'm like, what? You're right there, bro. I don't get these kids today. So I've been your stoned actor. I get stoned and watch movies because I don't know it's force of habit my friend asked me you think that making these videos you know being stoned and talking shit about <laughs> movies it's gonna hurt your career and I'm just like what career I'm not pulling a pension so the only time I don't smoke weed is when I have lines in a like a, a thing like a play TV show you know, I need to remember where to stand. I need to learn lines. I need to know all this stuff. I won't be stoned at all. I do not smoke weed. On set, I don't. Like, I just won't. That's the only time I don't smoke weed is when I have a part. So if you want to see me not stoned, give me a part. Unless the part is where I need to be stoned, in which case I will look just like this. <laughs> but honestly, you know what? Like, do you want JK Rowling on your team? Personally, I think we want her on our team, man. Like, same with Dave Chappelle. Dave is a smart guy. He knows how homophobic black culture has always been because of religion. He knows. He's a black guy. He knows. That the black community's relationship with the LGBTQ plus community is appalling at best and eerily similar to that of white supremacists versus black folk. Hear me black people and hear me well. I'm calling y'all out right here and right now. He's aware. So I don't think it's gonna take him very long to put together having the kind of influence that he has and saying the things that he has said, although incredibly hysterical, is likely going to lead to more of that. You know what I'm saying? Like more attacks on people who are already going through it. You know, and most of the people that are getting killed are black people. If you care about marginalized black people, come on, man. You can put this together. You're a really smart guy. And you're hilarious. You're hilarious. That joke was <laughs> hilarious. Some people are just... I don't know. There seems to be some kind of like, like a situation where people want to believe they can fly, right? But they don't want to wear a wingsuit or a hang glider or learn how to fly a plane they just want us to push them off the fucking ledge or they want to just say that they could just jump off the ledge and then everybody is gonna believe it is that a good analogy yeah but you identify as a woman but you weren't like that always like why can't you just why can't you just say that it's all they want that's all they want that's all they need and I'm, I'm telling you guys, you don't want these bathroom bills, okay? You don't want a man dressed as a woman standing in the urinal right next to you. That's not going to make you feel comfortable. That's going to make you want to fight. All right? <laughs> you don't want a dude walking into the women's room 
And then everybody screaming, there's a dude in the women's room, be like, bitch, you fucking told me I have to use this fucking bathroom. What do you want? The fuck do you want? I feel like people need to fucking chill out. Just chill the fuck out. Like, it's clearly moving way too fast for the middle of America, you know? And they have, they've got us by the balls, even though we've got all the fucking money and all the fucking people. The way that the fucking country has been fucking you know, rigged is that the middle of America has us by the balls. Okay. And it's moving way too fucking fast for them. Thank you, Caitlyn Jenner. Even though that bitch is on their fucking side, which is mighty white. It's just, everybody needs to chill out. Just chill. Just chill out. Be like, look, dude, if we're going to get down to brass tacks, if we're going to fucking rip this shit down and build it back better, let's start with the fucking Native Americans. All right. <laughs> Let's start with the people that were fucking murdered to build what we built. That the Chinese and the blacks built, all right, for the most part. They built, like, the railroads, the roads, the buildings, most of the buildings. Reparations? Yeah, man. <laughs> sure. Why not? You can't do it from here. You gotta go back home, kids. You can't, you can't be out here with the rest of us. You gotta go. If you want to do this shit super fast, you gotta go home to the middle of America. You gotta leave the cities. And go back to the fucking places you came from and vote there, okay? Because voting from New York, not helping. Voting from California, not helping anything. Not helping. Already have that. Have that. Go back to where you came from. These people need to, like, grow up around people, you know? And see that they're just people. They're just fucking people that are a little different. That's it. That's all it is. You see something this way and they see something a different way. Why would everyone want to be the same? What would be the point of that? Why would we all come down here to do the exact same thing and go back and tell tell a story to everybody about the same fucking story? Like, how fun is that? Like, even though, like, we all, like, might have similar experiences, we have different perceptions, right? So we're going to see it differently. We're going to perceive it differently. We wouldn't tell the fucking story different, right? So when we go the fuck back where we came from, you know, like, we'll have a story to tell. Trying to limit people's stories is weak shit. You know, screaming freedom while trying to fucking take rights away from other people. Fuck you, okay? Look in the fucking mirror, you fucking complete idiot. You're stupid. Everybody knows you're stupid. You're fucking dumb. You're just dumb as shit. You're dumber than dog shit. You're dumber than the dumbest thing, mayonnaise candy. Dumber than Donald Trump. I don't see why the black people... It's because of religion. Um, it's because they've been brainwashed by religion. Even though Jesus, their supposed Lord and Savior, said jack shit about fucking gay people and was hanging around hookers and lepers, I really don't think he'd have a problem with gay people at all. Stop being stupid. You know, there's different shit. Like, everybody's trying to do fucking... Everybody's trying to do arithmetic. And then some people are trying to do calculus. You know? <laughs> Without the people doing calculus and, you know, trigonometry and all that, like, we wouldn't have half the shit that we have. A tiny fucking fraction of the shit that we have that you love so much that you can't eat your balls out of. While you're doing arithmetic, just know and be happy and be fucking thankful that there's some motherfucker out there trying to do trigonometry. And doing trigonometry, shit's different. Shit's fucking different. And look how that turned out. If everybody was just doing fucking two-digit arithmetic, you know, good luck finding a, you know, a way home, right?